Namaste everybody, Irina here. Thank you for joining me in this yoga practice. I know you to take a cross-legged seated position or a kneeling position. We're gonna start the practice very shortly. So we are in spring. We're approaching to April month, the month known as April showers. Um, well, at least here in England. And um, that inspired me to dedicate this practice to the water element. So water is one of the building blocks of our body, of universe, of everything around us. 80% of our bodies consist of water. Uh, it's a very strong element, one of the strongest elements. And uh, the characteristics of water is transition, fluidity, um, and this is what I'd like you to bring into your own practice and to uh, cultivate those qualities while we're moving from one pose into another. Vinyasa is a great, vinyasa flow is a great example of that transition and fluidity of water. Also water is the element of the second chakra, Svadhisthana. So this is our emotions, which can be quite sometimes overwhelming and we can be flooded by the emotions. So we're going to be working in this practice on the pelvic area, opening through the hips, rotating internally, externally, flexing the hips. But as well, I'd like you to set the intention that this practice would be flowing. Take your time when transitioning from one pose into another, feel the body, feel that watery movement, that fluidity that you can bring into your own practice. So I'd like you to close the gaze, position the hands on the knees. Relaxing through the facial muscles, making sure that you're not holding too much tension in the upper body and the shoulders. Maybe you are putting that tension into being straight and holding the spine in a straight position. So finding that sweet spot between putting too much effort and um, not putting effort at all. So trying to avoid rounding through the back and blocking here the pelvic area. So just tilting pelvis slightly forward, rolling the shoulders slightly back. And taking your time to observe the way the body feels today. Observe any aches, any pains, any tension, anything that is perhaps sore that you would need to bring an extra awareness and attention in the practice. And gently start introducing the movement into the shoulders. So we are starting make your make circular movements. changing rotation to the opposite side. And then taking your right arm up, left hand on the floor and adding a side stretch to the right side of the body and then changing to the opposite side. Let's get into the twist towards the left and the twist towards the right. Back into the center. If you're sitting on the block, perhaps removing the block and bringing the heels closer to the groin. And we're gonna start massaging the hip area, start connecting to the adductors, the groin area. So making a 
like a butterfly wings flapping both of your legs. Just notice that pulling sensation in the groin, keeping your chest straight. And maybe increasing that movement, like the strength of the movement. Again, we don't want to yank, yet like very forceful, but gradually, gently that fluidity, maybe like a water forces with time, with patience through the rocks and creating all sorts of pathways. That's maybe how we want to approach the yoga practice from the element of water. And from here, let's get into the all four. And from the all four, melt your heart forward, keeping your seat bones up in the air. Start opening through your shoulders, taking your arms wider if you wish, if the sensation in the upper body are too strong. And from here, interlace your fingers, press into the forearms and lift the knees of the floor and pedal through the feet. Soft, gentle, fluid movements. Simultaneously, you want to keep pressing into the forearms and finding that length in the spine, but also bringing that movement into the ankles, feeling the sensation in the hamstrings, dropping the knees, planting your hands, inhaling, going through the arching of the spine, exhaling, rounding and engaging with the solar plexus. Inhaling, arch. Exhale round, bring the hips and the knees of the floor, lift the right leg up, look forward, step forward, dropping the back knee to the floor, sink into the hips. So sinking into the hips, imagine that you want to bring that weight, that pelvic area and go a little bit further. You start feeling the sensation on your hip flexor on the uh, extension of your left hip here. Stay with those sensations softly and gently. Allow the body to get used to that stretch, going past the stretch reflex and then lift the back knee of the floor, pivot and drop the right knee and sink into the left hip. Being careful on your knee if you need to do some padding, if you need to put something underneath to give you that support. I shouldn't be expecting any acute pain in the knee. Lift the back knee of the floor, pivot, Step forward, Samasthiti. Inhale, with your exhale, release the arms. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, fold forward with your right foot back, right knee to the floor. Inhale, arch to the back, look up, stretch the throat. Plant your hands, exhale into the down dog. Hold your breath, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra. Tug the toes into the down dog. Right leg up, look forward. Step forward. Bring the knee to the floor. Arch, look up. Plant your hands, exhale. Step forward, round through the back and inhale all the way. And exhale to the center, breathing in. 
exhale, release the arms. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, fold with your left foot back, left knee to the floor. Inhale, hips forward, arch in the back. Plant your hands, exhale, down dog, knees, chest, chin. Bhujangasana, tuck the toes, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Left foot forward, right knee to the floor, arch, look up, stretch in the throat, plant your hands, step forward, exhale, round through the back, inhale, back bend, and exhale through the center. Step back with your left foot. Rotate to the left side of the body and sink with the hips. So let's come into the runner's lunge. So creating that 90 degree angle onto the knee, keeping your back leg super strong. So kneecap elevated, feeling the sensation connecting to the bottom part of the body. You can stay here. Or you can bring the arms up and create that arching through the back, stretching the thyroid, opening through the rib cage, maybe lifting slightly the rib cage and breathing deeply. Okay, let's drop the knee to the floor. Pull your energy slightly to the center. With your right arm, goes fo go forward, stretch, 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 then rotate and bring your right elbow to the outside of the thigh. Hands into the prayer, namaste. Looking over the left shoulder. If you wish, you can Lift the back knee of the floor. Drop the knee to the floor. Coming back into the low lunge. Lifting the back knee off the floor, high lunge. We're going to pivot. And coming into the right side. So sinking, 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 creating that 90 degree angle, being careful not to overdo with your knee. So above knee above the ankle, but also connect to the back leg. Either bringing your hands to support yourself here onto the right thigh or creating that back bend. Okay, from here, drop the knee to the floor. Bring yourself slightly to the center. So bringing the pelvic to the center, right hand into the right hip, left goes forward, finding that length first, then twisting, expanding through the chest. And maybe, just maybe lifting the back knee of the floor. Strong connection to the bandha, so the perineum squeezed, navel drawn in, and looking over the right shoulder. Drop the knee to the floor, plant your hands, step back into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Drop the knees, drag the chest, the chin, Bhujangasana Cobra, a gentle back bend, or maybe not that gentle. Keep your glutes engaged, keep your legs straight, shoulders away from the ears, tuck the toes into the down dog. Transition into the seated, grabbing the block 
or the brick if you would like to elevate the pelvis which means that the knee can drop below the pelvis that will help you if you have tight knees and tight hips so bringing the heels close to the groin the further away the heels are from the groin you're going to be working more on the hamstring stretch the closer you feel that sensation in the groin and you're working more on your adductors okay you can position your hands on the top of the toes you can open up and position the big the thumbs inside of your feet dial up to you your preference so inhaling noticing that i'm tilting forward with my back straight i want to explore the space in front of me so i keep hinging maybe the elbows drop to the thighs trying to encourage the opening of the hips making sure that your shoulders are not glued to the ears and from here release the pose release your block bringing yourself into the navasana the boat pose so bringing the heels soles of the feet off the floor bringing your energy to the center your starting point can be here you could be, feel that okay i'm rounding through the back so how can i change it if i bring my chest slightly forward what does it do if i pull myself if i bring the thighs towards the center towards the center how what do i feel and then release slowly to the floor bringing your block underneath your knees making sure that your heels are closer to the buttocks keep squeezing that block ensuring that your glutes engaged lift the pelvis of the floor wiggle the shoulders okay, being careful with your knees again strong electric like pain would be an indication that it's not safe and you would need to come out of the pose keep squeezing that block between your knees maybe bringing that ujjayi breath the deep oceanic sound maybe reaching with the hips slightly forward slightly up into the air and then releasing let's decompress so roll into the ball your lower back may lift of the floor so curving of the spine And we're going to transition into the city so rock forward cross the legs plant your hands step into the Adha Mukha Shonasana. from here lift the right leg look forward step forward and drop your foot to the floor okay so first of all explore and see what are the sensations in the groin explore the distance between your shin and the groin maybe you can go a little bit further closer to the side of the mat maybe you need to put something to support your right buttocks if the gap is too tight and very strong sensations in the buttocks and from here you can have a supported version by bringing the fingers into the mat or maybe you want to interlace the fingers behind your back and get a bit further into your shoulders the chest the throat and look up OK, 
coming out. We're going to plant the hands. We're going to tuck the toes. We're going to lift, open up to the three-legged dog and then drop the foot to the floor, lift the opposite leg and bring it forward. Drop the shin to the floor, move your foot slightly away from the groin if this is necessary and this is something you're going for. Being mindful of your sensation in the ankles and in the knees. Maybe you need padding. Again, padding could be positioned a blanket underneath your foot or underneath the knee or both. And again, if you want to stretch. So without that support of the hands on the floor, you're bringing a bit more yang like energy. So keeping the body active, keeping the upper body active. And from here, plant your hands, use the momentum, lift, open up, drop the foot to the floor, drop the knees to the floor, Balasana, the child's pose. Taking your time to wind down the energy. Calm down that stream of, well, figuratively speaking, stream of your energy. It's like a river that goes through the rocks, bubbling up, having that force, and then coming into the place where it can be softer. Slower. And then peeling the forehead of the floor. And from here, you may find that you open up the body, especially through the hip area, and that you are now ready physically to get into the meditation with legs crossed, sukhasana or maybe a kneeling position. So your option here to meditate. Your option here could be to gently open the gaze and come into shavasana and have your relaxation. Or your option could be to finish the practice. Whatever you choose, this is your choice. I would always recommend to Spend some time, two to three minutes, to wind down. Observing perhaps your thoughts. Observing the feelings. The physical sensation in the body. And cultivating that state of awareness. That witness state. Very gently opening the eyes. And namaste.